Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to get some practice with determining if we should reject that null hypothesis or fail to reject. So we're going to do some real problems here. They're not going to be fully baked word problems, so you have to do everything, but you are going to have to use the concepts that we've talked about before. Now remember that because we are doing hypothesis testing, um, so I'll say hypothesis testing for small samples, we use the T distribution. And when I say small samples, I mean uh, less than 30 samples. All right? Um, and we've already done a lot of this stuff, but basically the T distribution is symmetrical about zero. Here's T, right? Um, and in order to use the charts associated with the T distribution, I know we've used the T distribution before, you need to know the degrees of freedom. Right, because you kind of have the degree of freedom on the left-hand side of that table. And that is basically the number of samples that you've collected minus one. Okay, So in all of these problems, you're basically going to be told, hey, I'm testing candy bars, and I select 17 candy bars to test. Well, then 17 minus 1 is 16. So when I'm using my t-distribution, I'll look at 16 degrees of freedom. I'll go down the left-hand column to 16 degrees of freedom, and I'll go across and read the value of t off the chart in that row. Now, what column do you stop at? It basically is determined by, um, by the, um, the level of significance alpha of significance. If you look in the back of whatever textbook you're using and you look at the T distribution, you're always going to be, almost always, going to be finding a chart where alpha is specified to the right and this is specified as T sub alpha. This is how the table's constructed. This isn't something I'm teaching you about statistics necessarily. It's just about how these T distributions are always constructed. Remember we talked about the normal distribution. The normal distribution, if you look it up, it gives you the area to the left. That's how the normal distribution is always set up to do. The T distribution is completely opposite. It gives you the, uh, well, you look up the area to the right, that's alpha, that's given to you in the problem, and you read off the value of T at that chart or at that location. So if you have 15 degrees of freedom and you know alpha is 0.01, then you look in the top row, uh, which is going to give common values of alpha. You go to 0.01 if alpha is 0.01, and then you go down to 15 degrees of freedom, and that value down there is going to be the value of T that corresponds to this location to give you the area to the right. But you always have to know that the T distribution chart is giving you the area to the right because sometimes you'll have to flip it over uh, and make it negative or positive depending on what you're, what you're looking for. All right, so let's go and work a quick problem and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to give you a word problem. I'm going to give you a bunch of information. Let's say the no 